What's up, Fit Fam? This is Giovanni of Geo's Logic, your host of Fitness Junkies. I hope this show meets you in good health and spirits, and if not, I hope it inspires you to do something about it. Finally, I've got a fitness photographer <laughs> on my show. It's been so long. I love fitness photography, and this guy is is climbing up the ranks. If you haven't heard about Ray, you'll hear about him soon. Um, so glad you can make it, Ray. Thank How you are so, you? Thank you so much for having me, Jim. I've been looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. So, Ray, I ask all my guests to tell me their particular fitness journey, and that kind of yours is going to be interesting because you're fit, and now you've kind of your journey has taken you into fitness photography and that's not really kind of what you set out to do. Not at all. It, it, it kind of happened by accident as most things typically do where I, I, I guess I had to pivot um, about two years ago. Um, I started off working, I was a partner in an entertainment company. Uh, we were booking comedians and bands both on and off the strip. Um, we started marketing those bands through social media. Um, I spun off a division within that company called Evolution Digital Media Group, which was the marketing division. Um, as a result of that, we needed content for the entertainment that we were booking, and then we needed pictures, we needed videos, and in the beginning, before I knew what I was doing, I was literally shooting everything with my with my cell phone. I had a Samsung Galaxy, uh, I think it was like the S2 or the S3, and uh, I started off with restaurants, and uh I know Sienna Italian was one of my, it was my flagship client, that's why I'm mentioning him, and he gave me a shot, and uh, basically I was taking pictures of my cell phone, and then eventually videos in my cell phone, and then we hired some interns from UNLV, and they were okay, and then I just realized, you know, I could probably do this myself, and you know, let me buy a camera, and that's how it all started. Wow. Yeah. So, um, what about your personal fitness journey, and... Um, working out and uh, sports, or did you have any passion for it in, at any point? I played lacrosse back in high school. I got my first gym membership when I was 17 back in Long Island, New York. Um, I think the gym culture, it's always been a part of my life. It's just, it's my default button. And, um, you know, Vegas is a hard town. And I come across a lot of people, people that struggle, people that have, you know, um, about social issues, psychological issues, they need counseling, they need therapy. And I'm like, no, you don't, just you know, go to the gym. Right. You know, for me, like like I said, it's my default. If I'm in a good mood, I go to the gym. If I'm in a bad mood, I go to the gym. I break <laughs> up with my girlfriend, I go to the gym. I got a new girlfriend, go to the gym. Take her with me to the gym. Right. It's just always been my thing because it just right. it just makes you feel better. It's yeah. never failed me. Yeah. You know? And then what happened was I met all these people um in the gym and some of them I, I got a client who's a decent sized gym, uh, I think it was about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, there's a bikini contest that's being held here. They had to reshift the location because of COVID. Um, all the bikini competitors used to come and do a photo shoot and start shooting some of the bikini models. I'm like, yeah, sure, let's do it. <laughs> you know, and, and that's how it all started. Got it. And that was it. about two years ago, I believe, two and a half years ago. Now, um, the... Bikini bodybuilders and the wellness bodybuilders are by far my favorite of course. look. I love m women with muscles. Mm -hmm. um, and But they're also a very um, requiring group as far as their photos and, and what <laughs> what they allow to be shot and, and how they want to be shot. Yes. Um, how have you been navigating that aspect they will, of the business? They will up your game. Like I tell other photographers, if you want to become good at photography, start shooting the bikini competitors because they are the most critical of themselves. They're the most critical, not, not necessarily the pictures, but of themselves. Like, I mean, it causes you anxiety sometimes when you shoot. When I first started shooting some of the top bikini competitors, some of them before they had their pro card, I would look at some of the other photographers they were shooting with, and I'm like, wow, these guys are really good, and they want to shoot with me. Right. And now you get anxiety. And right. to them, you know, it's it's an event. You know, they diet down. They, they pull their water. They, they eat no salt for a week. It's like getting ready for a show. So now the pressure's on you because they're getting ready for the shoot, 
and you're like, wow, I better not blow the shoe. Right. <laughs> you right. Don't, I want to look really bad. Right. Especially when I have, you know, I don't really have a big following on right. Instagram like some of these other photographers that have 80, 90, 100,000 followers. Right. But when I first started, like most people, when they first start, you know, doing photography, you're going to do a lot of collaborations just to get your name out there. So when you collaborate with a woman who's got 15,000 followers versus your two or 3,000 when I first started, you better shoot a good picture because when she puts that picture out there, if she likes it, it's going to help you out. Right. And if she doesn't put it out there, basically she didn't like the picture and you, right. <laughs> you didn't do a good job. Right. That's the you statement know? right there. And that's what it is. But they will make you up your game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, is there... And it's, it's, it's so cool because um, I've done a lot of pro production of mm -hmm. photo shoots, but not I'm not a photographer. But um, like, are there any aspects of it like that is like a no, no with fitness models? It's like, is there a certain angle? Can you not shoot from below or is there is there anything that you have to watch out? For? I was. I was gonna bring that up because so when I first started show, I first started shooting my clients, um, restaurant owners, real estate people, portrait shots, and you know regular individuals. They'll, they're not that critical, so you just have to shoot a good picture. And regular models, who aren't bikini competitors in the physical fitness industry, you know if you're in decent shape, you could just throw on a really nice gown. You gotta look good. The bikini models, on the other hand, uh -huh. in the fitness industry, you're talking about people with single digit body fat. Right. They're lean, they're aesthetic, you know, they're perfect from every angle. And when I first started shooting, I used to think, all right, um, should I zoom in on the, on the glutes? Right. Do they not want too much of a chest shot? Right. And when I first started, I would ask them, you know, what, especially in the bikini class, it's like, you know, what do you want me to focus on? Right out of the gate, the booty. <laughs> because and bikinis, the booty and the shoulders, you right. know, um, wellness is mostly the legs, right. you know, so they will feature, they want you to feature their best body. And a lot of times right. when I shot even the behind the scenes videos and I look at some of the other content creators and photographers that I do, there's a lot of glute shots in there. There's a lot of chest shots in there. You're zooming on the arms, the shoulders, and it's basically everything across the board. So, you know, it carries on. The problem is <laughs> when I shoot regular people, that mentality sometimes carries on into my regular photography. <laughs> right. So I shot a regular woman the other day. Um, it was a portrait shot, and there was just too much booty in the shot because I was still in fitness photography. <laughs> more. I had a fitness shoot the day before. Goes, There's a lot of my butt in that shot. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. And right. I, 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 no joke, I had to do, I had to redo the shoot. Wow. You know, so it happens. It's wow. like I said, but no, typically to them, whatever feature of their body they feel good about, they're gonna want you to shoot. It. Right. And that's what they want you to show. Right. Um, do you find that they're mostly, um, good people? Like, are they good to work with? They're all good the, people. Yeah. The, the misconception that I personally don't like, um, like, so I'm originally from New York and no one will ever say anything bad or derogatory about the people I shoot because they know some of them, are my friends of mine, there's a relationship there, but they're like, oh, that's a very, you know, they're very they're very into themselves you know they they're, they must be very standoffish or stuck up i'm like actually no they're not right i said they're the most positive inspiring people you'll ever meet in your life I right said, i have never been in a gym environment where i saw somebody who was in shape make fun of somebody who was out of shape if anything they'll walk over they're going to correct them right they're going to give them diet tips they want to people that are in that culture what they want to do and i do it too they want to pull other people into that culture Right. Because they know it makes you feel good. Right. And, you know, it's what Eve said on your show last week, look good, feel good. You, you put out a different vibe when you feel good about yourself. Yeah. That's why when I tell people I, I would prefer to shoot fitness all the time because they're just positive people. Yeah. They're always supportive. You get free advice whenever you want. Hey, I want to diet. What should I do? Oh, sure. Do this, write this down. Right. You right. know, and then when I watch a lot of the women, so outside of the fitness industry, women will tell you, oh, women are catty. Um, I don't have a lot of friends, whatever the case may be. I, most of my friends are bad. You look at the fitness competitors, they support each other. Yeah. Like the support network within that, like they're retagging, they're sharing content, they're inspiring each other. And, you know, I love that. Yeah, yeah. there's a big misconception about, um, especially men and women that look a certain way, they you know, let's call it the normal person kind of hates on them yeah. and kind of says, or in a way perceives that 
they're narcissistic or they're they like like they're there's all about vanity mm. and a lot of them are really doing it for self-esteem for mm. positive attitude and um you know i guess i guess there's just haters everywhere of course but um i'm finding more and more how really sweet these these competitors are um and it's a good feeling because you know you can get a perception by just looking at something from a far away yeah don't uh, judge a book by its cover yeah exactly. it's a big big yeah. big statement there um so you right now you shoot um uh the fitness world part-time and you are your photographer of other things as well. Talk to me about the the big picture of what you do. I started off um, with food photography, and then it branched out doing real estate. And then after I started doing real estate portraits, I got some doctor clients, medical clients, um, throw an attorney here and there, and it just branched out. And then when I first started doing it, um, my Instagram, like I didn't know, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't, my Instagram wasn't that good because it was just, it's a it's a fitness person, then it's a real estate shop, then it's a hamburger, then it's a, it's a real estate <laughs> office. I'm all over the map, right? You know, so finally, some photographers because photographers support each other either. You know, right. sometimes you razz each other online, right? Like, hey, the lighting was off, or you should have put the light here, or right. what is up with that shot? It's just right. fun between, you know, your comrades. But um, it, they're like, you should focus on one thing. I'm like, actually, I really don't want to. I said, I want to have more than one place to run to because if the fitness side slows down. I could do food photography, which will never slow down. If food photography slows down like COVID, I focus on the real estate photography. If that slows down, then I go after the medical field. So there's always somewhere f for me to shoot. You know, so the thing about me is people think, because of my, if you look at my Instagram, it's mostly just fitness. I'm not just fitness. I do portraits. I do real estate. I've shot for Gevlar, like the home real estate pictures. I do drone videos. Um, I like to be kind of well-rounded, mm -hmm. I guess you can say. So I'm mm -hmm. not limited mm -hmm. to what I can earn, and I'm not limited to, you know, having moments where I'm bored. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm always trying to, you know, get the work done somewhere. Yeah. So, but it's awesome. fun. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but you're drawn to the fitness world. I'm drawn to the fitness world. And you appreciate the bodies, both men and women. Both. Yep. I'm sure women a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> As a hetero male, yes. <laughs> yes. No, but I'm not going to lie. Like, when I shoot the guys, like, like I'm shoot, I was supposed to shoot a guy yesterday, but he had to cancel because his girlfriend got sick. But, um, like, when I shoot the men, the first thing I do after I shoot a guy is I run off to the gym. I go, I gotta, I gotta get to the gym. Like, Motivation. I gotta, I gotta get my shit together. <laughs> you know, so, you know, like, when I, even when I'm at the gym, I admire a, a guy just as much as I admire a woman. Like, I could look at a woman, like, most people, when they see what I do, they're like, oh, you must look at them. I'm like, no, I'm not looking at her like, wow, look at that body. I'm looking at her like, you know what that took to look like that? Mm. I'm like, that's weeks of dieting. That's two hours in the gym. And... I think we, we corresponded about this the other day, you know, to try to get a lot of the, the, the other misconception about these bikini competitors, they're like, oh, that's all they do. I'm like, no, it's not. A lot of these women have two or three jobs on the side, and they have a very strong hustle. They're working the pools, they do real estate, they're doing titles. Yes. You know, the, the, the amount of time that it takes alone to be in the fitness industry, to spread out that time and try to have a career is something that I can't even begin to comprehend. Yeah, I well, and there's no money in competitive there's bodybuilding there's unless none. you're the top you know, yeah. one, two percent. If, if, if you get to the point where you're like, like let's say a Paige Hathaway when you have three million followers, yeah, right. you'll get, you know, you'll get some clothing line to pay you five grand to post a picture of you. Right. But until you get there, yeah. you know, it's, you have to have another hustle. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not easy to do. Yeah. And the amount of dedication it takes to do that is something that, I know personally, I can't do it. Yeah. Like I've tried. I, I've worked with a lot of nutritionists. I've shot personal trainers, and I'm always prodding for information. You know, like Travis will tell you when I started photography, I was pressing him for information. That's just <laughs> who I am. I ask a lot of questions. Right. So I'm like, hey, you know, I want I want to cut down. Give me your diet. And they'll hand me their diet. Right. It's like five ounces of protein, two ounces of you know, three ounces of veggies, and you got to do this every day for like. 12 weeks right. Meal prep. I have maybe a five day window where I can maintain it and then the sixth day it's done I'm like I can't I can't, <laughs> I can't that's do funny. this yeah you know so when I see them doing it like I just have so much respect for it yeah yeah because it's hard you know and um, the the world that you're kind of now getting 
kind of behind the curtain a little bit because mm-hmm. you're meeting them in a vulnerable state because you know they're oh, yeah. doing a photo shoot. Um, what do you think about the the body, competitive bodybuilding world? It, it's it's good and it's bad. It it causes a lot of. I mean, I'm not a competitive bodybuilder, but it causes a lot of dysmorphia. Mm. And the reason why I understand that is because me as a non-competitor, I just go to the gym twice a day. That's all I do. I just do it for my own thing. Twice but, a day? Yeah, I go do cardio because when I do my content for my clients, like I'm doing it on the treadmill. I'm just, you know, nice, that's why smart. <laughs> so when I do that, I'm just to me, it makes me like feel a certain way. But then the thing is, when I'm not on top of my game, I don't feel good about myself. Mm. So I understand the whole body dysmorphia thing, mm. and that's just society. Because mm. I can promise you, when I'm two twenty, I'm kind of invisible. When I'm one seventy five. I make a lot more friends. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> okay. A certain way. Okay. That's just, that's just it the is what it is. The society we live in. Yeah. That's the society we live in. And I just think, you know, if you don't think that's true, you're just kind of in denial. Yeah. You know, and I think the competitors are very hard on themselves. But the one commonality I have found with a lot of the people I've shot, I'd say 90% of them is there was some pain in their younger years. They were either bullied, picked on, they were the outcast, they were the one that was different. And as a result, you know, they just morphed into this person where they just bloomed later on in life. I guess that was their way of fighting back, mm. you know, from the, I guess, childhood trauma. I mean, I was bullied as a kid, not not bullied to the point that he's now. I'm different. I'm Filipino. Right. I grew up in a you know, predominantly white neighborhood. So, like, you know, I'm not saying I was, like, held back or anything like that. But there was I dealt with my share of prejudices. And I guess when I got older, it kind of carried me. I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to just start going to the gym. And that's when I got my membership at 18. And I've just been going ever since. Yeah. You know, yeah. So everything just maps towards it, I guess. Yeah, it's um, there's a lot of pain in a lot of areas in society, but it it's it's I always say it's the best driver, the best motivator. Pain oh, yeah. is absolutely. So um, and you know we all kind of mask it and try and you know yeah. put our best self forward. Um, how do you feel about? these the filter world that we live in now and especially on social media and that you know a photographer you have to you know do some editing and post of course yes i mean that's just part of it but now every photo seems to be filtered (laughs) it's like we don't even know who the real person is i think it's getting a little bit carried away yeah so to me as a photographer i'm only going to edit so much like i will tell a woman this is what i'm going to edit i'm going to smooth out some lines if you have you know women all have women past a certain age they have the crow's feet mm-hmm. you know unless you're 15 years old <laughs> you know you, you can have the crow's feet you know right. you can have the laugh lines i'll mm-hmm. smooth that out but if you want me to do what's called hyper editing like i'm not going to do that or if you want me to do it i'm going to charge you a lot of money for that like it's about 75 dollars an image <laughs> like if i have to open up another app or two apps to get that certain look Right. Where and the sad part is they don't need it. A right. lot of them really don't need it. Some right. of them are just so pretty. I'm like you don't need any more. Right. You know. And there were some competitors from way back in the day that I shot. The picture came out great, and they still edited it a little bit more. I'm like, you, you look great. Mm. You know. But I guess that's why they look the way that they do. Mm. You know. There, <laughs> there was a meme I saw on Facebook where uh, it was a guy that uh, he went on a date with a woman. It was like I don't know if it was a caricature. He's like, well, I went in a, on a Tinder date, but obviously she forgot to bring her filters. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love you know, that. So that I found really funny. It's no, hard. but I think it's too much now. I think now it's too much. Yeah. You know, it's it's, so. it's ridiculous. Um, so I know there's a lot of negotiating in like the model or the bodybuilder and the photographer. If the model is, you know, up the ranks and whether it's, you know, followers or mm-hmm. popularity, you might even shoot her for free. Just oh, yeah. To get... There's a lot of collaboration. Right. So kind of where does where does fitness photography pricing? How does how does that work? Like, is it is it 500 a shoot on average? It all it all varies. When I first started my career, I did not know how to price. And I was getting destroyed. Like I would charge like hundred dollars shoot one fifteen, and some photographer was like, "You're undercutting the industry." So I'm like, "Yeah, you're, you're right. I don't know what I'm doing." Right. You know. And then I started watching what other photographers how they bill out, 
and it's hourly. They charge per edited picture. They charge you for every piece of equipment that they're using. They charge you for use of the camera, the lens, the light stands, the strobe lights, the soft boxes. So there's line items. Oh, wow. It's a lot. You know, okay. when I look at some of these other professional photographers that right. I've been doing for 15 years. So when they're like, all right, my rate's 150 an hour. But you're not going to get all the pictures. You know, you get 10 edited pictures or you get two or three included with that rate. And then any extra pictures you want, that's going to be twenty-five to thirty dollars per edited picture. And before you know it, you're, you're now at a five hundred dollar shoot, minimum a five hundred dollar shoot. Right now, if I come across somebody who's at the top of her game, like let's say a Paige Hathaway approach, yeah, I'm shooting her for free. Right, three million followers. Th that that would not matter for me to charge somebody like that because <laughs> right. no one else is charging somebody like that. Right, you know. And I know there's a lot of bikini competitors out there right now that are doing a lot of collaborations. Because they will get you the ones that are willing to pay because their name is out there already. Mm -hmm. you know, And that's just the nature of the business. So I know I'm working with two other photographers right now that are trying to get started. And they're like, we want to do what you do. I'm like, how did you get started? I'm like, you're going to do a lot of free shoots, like mm -hmm. the first six months to a year. Yeah. And you have to. You know, you're going to blow a lot of shots. You might even lose customers along the way. Um, they're not going to be honest about whether or not the pictures are good because it's free. Right. So if somebody right. does a free shoot, they're not going to tell you it's a bad picture. You're like, oh, it's it's a good picture. Thank right. you. Right. But then they don't post it. You're like, all right, maybe it wasn't that good of a picture. Right. You know. So that's where you hit, you kind of have to have that balance. But you know, like I would say that the average photographer's rate, the people that have been doing it for over seven to ten years, their average shoot started seven hundred dollars or more, mm. easily. Yeah. You know, and that's for four looks. That's for maybe four or five looks. Okay. You know, it's worth it. Because yeah. they know everything. Like the big thing with fitness photography, it's the posing, which my posing skills are maybe at sixty percent. Uh, I watch these YouTube guys, and like the same model in with me in the hands of a guy who's been doing it for seven years. It's a whole different pose. It's a whole different shoot. Mm -hmm. Like um, one photographer I follow, he's the reason why I became a fitness photographer. Like he did a YouTube video where he shot a model was not really in shape i mean she wasn't overweight but she wasn't a bikini competitor i know if you gave me that person to shoot the pictures would have not came out that well he shot her it took him 15 minutes and she looked like a bikini competitor i'm like wow how did he do that wow and it was it was just it's very subtle things like hands you know don't cut off the arms like a lot of subtle things it's not just you know pushing the button on the camera yeah yeah, yeah. it's 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 not as easy as it might look yeah. um so the fitness models that you do shoot, um, what do you think they, th like, what's, why do they want these kind of sexy pictures? Like, I, it, it sometimes it confuses me how on one end they don't really want to be objectified by just being this mm -hmm. hot chick, but then they continually put out a image that is objectifying their bodies. Oh yeah. What do you? Why did it? Why are they doing that? Do I you think, think. I think it's because what I think what the fitness industry is doing in a weird way. They're more showcasing their hard work, and okay. I'm not saying that because I shoot these women. Like I look at other so-called Instagram influencers, where it's purely they're, they're purely just selling from the sex side of it. Like it's just like booty crack I'm like, oh, you know right. it's not there's no aesthetic to it right you know when you look at a fitness models page like you're looking at the abs you're looking at the curve of the glutes you're looking at the the quads like there's a lot there you know right. some of them maybe they cross the line but maybe my opinion's biased because i'm part of that culture right so i could look at a fitness woman and not be like oh man let me you know let me hit her up for netflix and chill night <laughs> you know, I'm not that guy. I could look right. at him and be like, wow, that took a lot of hard work. Right. I want to shoot her. She looks really good. That's a fit woman. Right. You know, unfortunately, 90% of the men out there are not thinking like that. Right. You know, so are they putting themselves in a position where they could be objectified? Yes, I believe they are. Do I think they do it intentionally? I don't think so. Mm. You know, I don't know. I'm not really in their heads, mm -hmm. so I can't speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. But from a guy standpoint, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, if I was one of those guys that had you know, 3% body fat was ripped all year round, you're going to see nothing but bathroom selfies on my Instagram. Bad, <laughs> <laughs> <Dad>, objectify. <laughs> uh, you know, I think at the end of the day, I think, <laughs> I, I, think, I think the honest answer, we all like the attention. 
Like okay. we all do. Okay. Like I know when I'm in shape and people, wow, you look like you work out. It makes me feel good. Yeah. You know, when I'm, you know, like in the winter months when I'm not really doing much, like I said, and I walk into a room and like I'm almost invisible. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I got to get back to the gym. I love it. <laughs> you know? Almost invisible. I yeah. like that. Um, so these models that you shoot um, and the, the um, I don't know what you call it, the, the setups, the, you know, the, you know, you have them in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of, and I think really good photographers like to push the envelope where you're getting into suggestive nudity or c c shooting like a woman's back but have no top on and you get just the yes. side boob and that's the back. A, I think, and personally, I think that's a little bit too much. Okay. Um, I can't, I'll shoot that content if they want me to shoot it because that's what they're hiring me for. Okay. Um, it's tricky what I do because I work with a nonprofit foundation where I shoot a lot of kids for the CCF, for Clark County School District. We do the anti-bullying program. And um, so I'll, I shoot a lot of their kids. Mm. So a lot of the parents are on my Instagram page. So I have to be very careful of the content. Like I shoot a lot of boudoir photography, lingerie. I don't post that much stuff uh. because, you know, if I'm shooting someone's 14-year-old daughter, you know, and then she's seeing that, it's going to be like, oh, so he's that photographer. So I have to be careful too. Got so it. I kind of... To me, in my mind, I tend to want to only shoot stuff that I, that people in my network will be okay with. PG, PG, basically. <laughs> PG, yeah, PG. Right. You okay. know, and it's, it's respectable. But at the okay. same token, if a woman's comfortable with that type of content, shoot it. Right. You know, I can't judge her if, she, if that's what she wants. Well, I'm going to shoot it, you know. Okay. But she has to tell me, like, I, I, even now, maybe because I've been doing it only for about two, two and a half years, I think it is. I'm still, unless I know the model, it takes about, most models I've shot two or three times. Like, there's no such thing as just one shoot unless you really just blow the shoot. So that's when you know you're good because they want to shoot with you again. Right. But I know when I first started, I was not comfortable posing them a certain way. Now it's like more glute, it's more booty, you know, arch your back. Now I know because it comes with experience. Right. And I know I'm shooting a woman that wants to showcase that. Right. You know, so now I'm kind of good with it. But yes, you... Like sometimes I'll look at what other photographers are shooting. It's it's borderline R rated, right? And they have. I think they should be a little bit more careful. But like I said, that's that's for them. That's what they want. So they want the attention. They want the attention. That will get them yeah. attention. Um, so Travis, let's see one of the shoots that we have that Ray sent us. Oh, that's great. She's good people. Where was that with Jim? That was, um, oh, which one was it? She's going to kill me. It's Liz Carrillo's gym. Um, I think it's on Sunset. Uh, oh, I on forgot this street? Name. Sunset? Yeah, it's, it's, right by the, it's right by the Wahoo's Fish Taco on Sunset. Oh, she's, she's, she's going I know, to kill I know. Me. It's, uh, but it's Liz Carrillo. Liz Carrillo's WBFF. Bizarro's um, or... Uh... I know, I know what yeah, you're, Tim, you're talking about. That was Liz Carrillo. Yeah, she's going to kill me. Liz, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I haven't shot there in a while. Um, but um, that was an easy shoot because that gym was, and, and a lot of the gyms I work with, I'm blessed because they just let me use their facility. But a lot of, some of the other gyms I shoot at, the gym is a very tricky place to shoot because a lot of times you shoot at some of the, the bigger gyms that are, they're not going to shut the gym down for it. Like I've shot at Fit right. Club, Dragon's Lair. They're not shooting, they're not shutting that gym for a photo shoot. So you have right. to shoot around the people that are working out. Right. Now, Travis knows because I use three off-camera strobes and these things have a big footprint. Like mm. I've got the soft boxes, there's the light thing on it. So I, I 
easily, I probably need about a 20 foot diameter around me to get one shot. Wow. So that's how much space I take up in the gym. And a lot of times, if I don't have an assistant, and 90% of the times I don't, because if I did, I'd have to charge more money. So I try to save people money. I have to put the camera down, move the lights out, or if like, you know, you go to a hardcore gym where there's bodybuilders there, you've got to give them right away. You have to give them right away. Right. So when I'm when I shoot in a busy gym, like I tell the model, listen, we have an hour and a half to get this done. And we gotta get out of people's way, or we have to go really late at night when they're right about to close, or mm -hmm. we have to go like on a Sunday when a lot of people aren't there. But even mm -hmm. then there's always people there mm -hmm. because it's a hard it's one of those hardcore gyms or one of the gyms that everybody likes to go to. So like you're pushed for time and you're kind of rushed and you're you're scurrying, you know, the, the model's depleted. <laughs> like, right. There's a lot going she's on. She, she's brain foggy, <laughs> you know, you're, you're sweating. You're like, oh my God, you're gonna get this shot done. So right. like, there's, there's a lot going on, you know, but it's fun. And that model, you said she's good people? Brain is, Brain came out of nowhere. Like I shot Brain before she had a pro card. And I remember I reached out to her. I said, you, know, you have a great look. I said, Vera said, let's do a shoot. And she's like, oh, I'm, I'm down. And when I looked at her Instagram, when I hit her up, it didn't seem like she had that many like uh, gym shoots yet. So if if I look at if I look at somebody, like you can have a lot of photo shoots, but if I see that you don't have a lot of shoots in the gym, which typically is my lane, I'll ask them, hey, you want to do a gym shoot? And then she started. Now she's probably shot by almost every photographer out there. Like all the big names, they're all shooting her. You know, and uh, she got her pro card. Uh, I think it was her first. She's she's a cutler athlete. I think she got it first shot. Uh, Peyton, too, got her pro card. I shot her. So those are the first two pro card holders I got. Um, who else did I shoot? Oh, um, Lauren. Um, Christina. Christina Lauren. Yeah, mm -hmm. Christina Lauren. Mm -hmm. uh, she's WBFF mm -hmm. pro card. I shot her too, and her I met her because her and Bryn are really good friends. But um, like these are hardworking women. Yeah. You know, these are very hardworking women. Yeah. You know, and when you're shooting somebody like that. Like it comes with a certain sense of anxiety, right? Because they got a lot of followers, you know. Right. It's like you know, and like they're and they're so sweet. Like they're really, really cool. They're, oh, they're so much fun to work with. Good, good, know? good. Um, so have you ever shot at Kilo Club? No, I actually there was somebody that reached out to me about a year ago. I'd love to shoot there because the Kilo Club is dark. Yeah. So if I shoot in the gym. The less windows, the better, because now I have more control of the lights. Right. If those lights coming in from the windows, and like, I love shooting at Fit Club because I was with them. I started shooting them when they first started. But there's a lot of neon going on there. So, right. Travis will tell you when you're shooting in manual mode, you've got to adjust the, you know, you've got to adjust the grayscale on the camera. When the lighting is like green, blue, and pinks are getting thrown around, and all of a sudden somebody opens up the garage door, and now the sunlight's coming in. Now you got to adjust the settings on the camera again. Now the model's waiting. If I shoot in the gym, like Dragon's Lair, which is this, it's the it's the same light every time. Black walls, same white light. It's the same look every time. Kilo Club is the same thing. It looks like it's the same look every time. I don't think you guys have a lot of neon lights over there. Uh, a lot of sexy deep lights it's okay. like rich it's a very rich yeah. environment look looking so no, i'd love to shoot that one day yeah, yeah. Kilo club looks really cool yeah maybe so normally what i do with my um fitness model guest competitors or whatever i like to shoot um the segments at the gym but they're video okay so but it might be interesting to kind of do a collab with Let's you with get a photo shoot and the video part of it because they're like showing actually talking about the exercise and whatever um and i also train there so i have a relationship with the management so <laughs> well can i be honest with you three months ago i saw a video of you at the kilo club i'm like you know i gotta hit him up and ask him if he wants to do a shoot over there <laughs> so i was kind of already thinking about that yeah. I, just, I was so slammed i never got around to ask yeah you, you know but i was it was literally three months ago i saw a video of you training somebody, it might have been Vanessa. I don't remember. You you were doing a video with somebody, okay. and I saw the lighting. I'm like, that's probably a really good place to shoot. And yeah. the woman who wanted me to shoot there a year ago, she never got back to me. I don't okay. know what happened. And I was really gonna hit you up. Yeah, I'd love to shoot there. Yeah, just let's collab whenever you want. This, you know? There's this um, model or f fitness competitor that I reached out on Instagram, and hopefully we'll get her she might be a one she's okay. she just won i think the samson oh yeah the one last week yeah so is she local or is she from out of town she's local okay yeah um but like 
I think it'd be interesting for them. And then we could come have you back on the show with her. Oh, yeah. And we can talk be about fun. the shoot. That'll yeah. be fun. That'll yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely down for that. Cool. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, take a look at um, Peyton, is it? Yeah, this yeah. is, I believe this one's Peyton. Peyton, is a, she got a pro card, too. I think it was last year. <laughs> Yeah, she's great. She's good people. Too. She's a. I shot her. Smoking. I think I've shot paid them about four times already too. So we were supposed to do another shoot. Uh, I think it was two months ago, but she's been slammed with the pool. Yeah. You know, she's one of the she's one of the girls that's got like two three jobs in the side going on. She's, yeah. She's always working. You know, she's always busy, but she'll always find the time for the shoot. I remember two times I shot her. She came straight after the pool. Wow. And then she had to be like at a promo gig right right after the shoot. I'm like, you're, you're, you're out of your mind. And she was like, yeah, then after the promo shoot, I'm going to go back and do cardio. I'm like, what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Yeah. Because you know, I follow them on Instagram. Like I follow right. their stories. Right. You know, so. And do you recall where that gym was? That was Dragon's Lair. Okay. Yeah. The reason why, it's, that's why, right, like Kilo, like Dragon's Lair, the walls are all black. It's dark. There's no windows. There's the one window in the front, but even those windows are blacked out. Got it. Um, some of the other gyms, they're just, like I said, they're, uh, oh, Rec Room. <laughs> Liz Carrillo's gym is Rec Room. Thank okay. God. Yeah. I, 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 nice. That was really bothering me. Like, I was still in, like, Rec Room. <laughs> rec Room Liz. So, um, <laughs> nice. Yeah, Dragon, yeah, Dragon's Lair, it's dark. But that's why Kilo come if, if I remember when I saw it, it didn't seem like there's a lot of windows, or maybe there were There's dark. a lot of windows, but I but normally, it dark. normally I go about 8 o'clock, so it's, okay. it's actually never crowded at Kilo no. Club. Because they have a, a a cap on their memberships, but um, it's it's after at eight o'clock, mm -hmm. it's pretty quiet and like you said, it rarely takes more than ninety minutes. We just boom 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 oh, yeah. boom and get it done. And they're and they're, they're there's the people there are so cool. It's 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 a really it's a really good place to do a photo shoot. You'll you'll like yeah. it. I'm um, glad you asked because I really wanted to shoot there. I've been dying nice, to shoot there. Yeah, nice. I've been dying to shoot We're there. We're gonna do it. We're yeah, gonna do it do for it. sure. Um, so one of my favorite topics and, you know, sorry, I have to tell you, of course, is boobs, <laughs> Spe specifically fake boobs. Okay. And like Bryn, I don't think has them. No, I think Bryn's natural. I yeah. think Bryn's natural. And, and, and I'm specifically talking about boobs in bodybuilding mm -hmm. and it seems like there's definitely a look that the judges are going for, and it's usually girls that are enhanced. Mm -hmm. um, what do you find, what's your interpretation about that, and how do you feel about From From what I understand, only because I follow a lot of people's content, um, I think winning a title, they say it's very political. Yes. Um, me personally, when I look at a woman, like. I, I wouldn't pigeonhole myself and be like, oh, I'm a boob guy, I'm a leg guy. I'm more like an overall aesthetic. Okay. I'm like, if your proportions are right, it's a good look. Right. Like boobs or no boobs, if, like if, 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 if you've got that taper and you've got you know, the, the muscles in your legs and you're, you're pretty leaned out, like to me, like I'm not stereotypical. Like I've dated women that had fake boobs. I've dated women that had natural boobs. I've dated women that had no boobs. Yep. You know, so to me, I'm not... It's, it's never been like a prerequisite to me. Right. You know, so, but I think in the industry as a whole, from what I understand, um, it's not necessarily that. It's political. Like, it is 100% political. Like, right. if you are running in the right circle, you're going to get that pro card. 
that's what I've been told. That's from what I see people's content. That's what a lot of people sometimes complain about. If you're with the right if coach, you're with that, yeah, the right, right team. coach, the right team. Yeah. My, but like I said, I'm not part of it, so I'm not, right. I don't really know. But I just follow other people's content. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. You know, yeah. so it's just one of those weird, weird things. But I know a lot of them, like, you can't really tell. Like, I think in the, I, I think when they wear those suits, they like, pushed them up. They're and... pushed up, or maybe there's something there. Like, I'm like, I couldn't really tell. Like, when I when I see them on stage, like that doesn't shoot out at me. Like, or maybe I'm just not looking for it. It doesn't shoot out at me. Like, oh, she's natural, or she's she's augmented, or she's had a boob job. Like, I don't see that. Like, what I'm looking for is the aesthetic, I guess. I think. You know, if you look at the top, like the top Olympia bikini and wellness, like most of them are they have, enhanced. Yeah, they're enhanced. A lot and, of them are enhanced. And, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. You know, are they in the right team and all the, it's It's kind of, they have to have the right look, mm -hmm. the right symmetry, the right conditioning, <laughs> and the right coach and the right team. It's just so, it's so yeah. much. It's, yeah. It's and, so much. And I've, feel for these women because it, it's just it's a tough um position mm -hmm. to i can only imagine being on stage in a you know string cheese yeah. bikini yeah. and asking to be judged oh yeah and you know if you don't win you it's almost impossible to separate well i'm not i don't have a good coach or i from I'm not good enough. Yeah, I I personally would not like that. Like no. I, I would not like. I don't like to be judged myself. Right. To me, my judge is the guy in the mirror. Right. You know, I'm hard enough on myself. Where like, if I go to the gym and I'm having like, if I go to, I work at LV. I could I could drop into almost any gym. I work at the let me work out. Right. I stick to LVAC because I'm just a creature of habit. So LVAC is hit or miss. If you go at the right time, some of the most jacked guys are there. Right. If you go at the wrong time, you're the best shaped guy in the gym. <laughs> so depending on how I want to feel that day, <laughs> like if I go during off-peak hours, I feel pretty good about myself. Right. I go 5 o'clock when all the pool guys are there and all the competitors are there. I'm like, oh, I don't know what I got to do. You know, so it all depends. But right. I, as far as the, the objectified is, like I used to think about that too. But then when I think of that mentality – I try to put myself in their position. I'm like, all right, so if the price of being objectified is to look like you're in the top 1% of the world, if not the country, the world, as far as your physical appearance, objectify me. Right. Like if, if like to me, like Dwayne Johnson's my, like if I could look like The Rock, phew, objectify me all you want. Go ahead, <laughs> objectify me all you want. Do what you want to do. do, do, do. So, right. But then some women, yeah, I guess it's a contradiction because they will complain about it, but yet they step on stage and they're willing to be judged. And it's tough. Yeah. It's, it's not easy, yeah. you know? And then I know women, when when they've competed and they lost, they just emotionally, it, it set them back. Like yeah. they, took, they took an emotional beating. Like they shut down for like a month or two, all that hard work for nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, I saw, um, like <laughs> when I saw Eve's show, where she said, yeah, she goes, I, I was looking down at my thing. I'm like, do I have the right number? How come they hit things before? But like, that actually made me laugh. Right. Like, I could almost I could almost understand that. Yeah. Because you know, I remember when I first shot Eve, when I first saw her at, a, it was at Dragon's Lair. I remember, I, oh, I was shooting Peyton at Dragon's Lair. So I shot, Peyton got me, we shot at Dragon's Lair. I walked in, and you could spot the bikini competitors in any gym. You can spot them. They just right. have that look. They've right. got the right gear. Everything mm -hmm. matches, and their right. aesthetic is crap. Their right. aesthetic is fun. Right. You know? right. Like, you just look, yep, she competes. Yep. She competes. She yep. may not have won yet, but she definitely competes. <laughs> so I walk in. Me and Peyton walk by, and I take one look at Eve. I'm like, yeah, she's definitely. And she was just shredded. Like, the one thing that stood out, she, her conditioning was ridiculous. And then, sure enough, uh, I don't remember if she reached out to me or if I reached out to her. Like two months later, I'm like, she's a lock. She's definitely gonna win. And then it turns out she didn't. Like right. when she said on the show, I, you right. know, I was like, wow. Like, right. You know, what are they looking? It's like, what are you looking for? It's like, what are you right. just looking for? Right. Yeah. You know, that's where I think it might be, it might be just politics. Well, know? there's that. Um, how do you feel about the gear in female bodybuilding? I love the gear. <laughs> I'm all about the gear. Like, you know what type of gear I'm talking about? Oh, like the oh yeah, gear gear. I thought you meant like the clothing. No, gear. no, no. Oh yeah, the gear. I mean, I like to me. There's more of it than yeah, I even imagined. Like to me, it, it's definitely out there. You know, um, 
because to look like that, you, you have to take compounds that'll get you a little bit more shredded. Yeah. You know, then, you know, I know I've shot some women that are naturals there. I've shot two women that were the Iron Man naturals. It's a whole different look. Mm-hmm. Like you can tell, like even on men, I could take one look at a guy like he's running gear. I know because I'm not going to lie. I run gear. Yeah. You know, a lot of us do. It's the yeah, culture. So, do I. so um, you know, you could just spot it. Yeah. So to me, I'm like I go the other way. Some people try to hide it. <laughs> If you're past a certain age, I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to try to drag you into my world. But you know what? You're 35. You need to be taking it. <laughs> <Right, laughs> because right, it's going right, to make you feel better. Right. It's going to make you look better. Right. You know? So, but um, I personally don't think, I don't think it's good for women because eventually it might catch up. To, it will catch up to them. Well, especially when you, you know, get to the next When you get to the next level. You get to the next category. Figure and... Yeah, you get to figure. Like, I've seen women figure that it's just, this is my personal opinion. I'm yeah. not knocking it. It's a little too masculine for me. Mm. And, you know, like I would shoot it. Um, it's not personally a look that I personally like am, am drawn to. I mean, I could appreciate it because mm-hmm. I know how much work goes into it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, sometimes it's a little bit too much, you know, yeah. and that's just my opinion. Yeah. You know, I, I, I pretty much, I'll probably draw the line at bikini. That's the look I like. Mm. Wellness is, is not bad either because it seems like a lot of the wellness girls is just that their legs are a little bit bigger. Yeah. So I think that's more... Um, it's more of the look. It's more of the genetics. Your genetics, where if you have bigger hips, right. bigger legs, that's for you. Right, because they still want the bikini upper body. Yeah. Look. Yeah, they still they, lean up top. Yeah. So yeah. they don't want the over muscular no. upper body. But, see, that's the misconception too, because people like even with me, like you know, my friends in the East Coast, they're like, oh well, you know, you're you're you're, you're taking stuff. You're not natural. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going crazy with the crazy compounds, but you still have to work at it. Right. You can't just take something and no it just magic magically pill. appears. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't just happen. It's yeah. not like, you know, I'm take some pills and, you know, and, and no, you got to diet, you got to work out, you got to do cardio. 100%. <laughs> you know, yeah. And but, like some of the stuff makes you feel, makes you bloated and yeah. you carry more water. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, it's a science to it. But what, this is what I tell a lot of guys, and especially I'm 50, I'm 54. All right. So I tell all of my friends back home of my age. And they're like, what are you doing out there? They're like, obviously you're not. I'm like, no, I'm not natural. I'll, I'll tell you right now. I said, but you know what? It's better than drinking beers all day long, eat, slamming Doritos and watching the football game. I don't <laughs> even like sports. Okay. I hate sports because to me, if I, why would I why would I watch somebody else's greatness where I could just go to the gym and be my own, be my own athlete and, right. and you know admire, admire myself? Right. So to me, like I have friends that are like, oh, uh, like it's a Sunday. Oh, let's watch the games. I'm like, no, I don't gym. All you do is go to the gym. Like all you do is watch sports. <laughs> like that's my thing. I like going to the gym. Right. You know? I love that. So it's I just love that. Yeah. But I, I once every so often I'll get into sports. Like if it's if I'm a giant fan. Okay. Like if it's a Giants I'm always Super I wasn't Bowl. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was a New England Patriots fan. You know, I used to love Mike Tyson back in the day. Yeah, yeah. But outside of that, I really don't care about it. Cool. You know, it's just not my thing anymore. Cool. So Um so our last uh model, we didn't have any video Christina Lauren is a friend of the show. She actually does her podcast here. We have a couple of final images of her that you took. She's she's great. Yeah, she's good. I actually have a behind the scenes. I shot B roll for her for her behind the scenes. I just uh-huh. didn't get around to finishing yet. Uh, so I just posted the reels of her too. Okay. She's good people too. Yeah. You know, she's a motivational person. She yeah. she inspires people. Yeah. But um, you know, it's what we spoke about. These women, they're they're just they inspire other women. Yeah. You know, there's no cattiness with them. That's why women outside of the industry, when they're like, I don't have any girlfriends, I'm like, go make friends with fitness models. They mm-hmm. will support you. I'm yeah, like, they will. They will drag you into the world. You're gonna have to work out with them. But gonna, <laughs> you have to do the meal prep you with gotta, them. You gotta do meal prep. You, you gotta do all that wonderful stuff. You know. Yeah. But yeah, they're good people. Yeah. Um. So, when you get when when you're looking to find your next model, I know probably what you what I do and what you do is probably the same getting these models to respond to your DMs. Mm-hmm. How difficult it, is it for you to get them to respond? Do, it, you, do you find it challenging? Believe it or not, it, it's not anymore. I guess maybe because now I have more creds. Okay. Because I know 
So what I look for, if I'm looking for somebody to collab with, like I'll look through their Instagram, mm -hmm. I'll stalk you, <laughs> I'll look through their Instagram, I'll see if they have any Insta gym pictures. Stock. Yeah. <laughs> if they don't have fitness gym pictures, I want to hit them up because to me, in my mind, that's got to be common sense. She obviously works out, but there's no pictures of her in the gym, which means the gyms that she works out at are either not allowing her to do sh shoots over there or she doesn't know a gym fitness photographer. So um, that's where I fly in. I'm like, hey, you want to do a fitness shoot? No, it's, it's, it's very quick. Hey, you want to collab on a fitness shoot? You know, I see you have no gym pictures. Usually it's two or three lines. You're like, yeah, I'm down. It, it happens like that. But I think what happens is when they look at my content and they see some of the women that I shot, oh, that's a pro, that's a bikini pro, that's an NPC pro, that's a WBFF pro. He shot some of the women in the top of their field. He's a real photographer. So they're going to collab. Now, when I first started, it wasn't that easy, but I, I got lucky. Um, I still got it because I started shooting one of the... Um, I started shooting. I started started shooting Catherine Kelly, who was a naturals competitor. So she was pretty much the first one who I started my fitness journey with, shooting all fitness. Basically, I was learning with her. And um, when I shot her, the pictures came out surprisingly good. And then the way that that curve happened was um, another woman who competed, Stasha. Um, Stasha hired me to do a shoot for her sportswear company, and that was four women. And that was very nerve wracking. Like I, it, it's hard enough to shoot one. Right. On this shoot, it was for her product photography for her clothing line, uh -huh. and there were four girls, and these are all the girls that work at the pools. And so you needed four girls in one shot. Four girls in one shoot. It was Oof. a four and a half hour shoot. I had to shoot them in three or four different outfits each, individually each, group outfits each. Oh. Um. It was very harrowing. <laughs> yeah. But they were some of the best pictures that came out, and. That might have been the one that put me on the map because when I got those pictures out, that's where people started coming out to me. And then when you start shooting the ones who became the pros, then it just it just it's almost like a snowball effect. Like he's shoot now he's shooting the pros. That's why some of the other photographers that are only shooting pros, these guys are getting booked all the time. That's why right. you couldn't get you know you couldn't get Sean because he's booked all the time. He's right. shooting pros. Right. You know, I mean, if I could get on that level, yeah, God bless me. <laughs> right. Right. But that didn't happen overnight. Yeah, you know, that does not happen overnight. I guess there's like a tipping point, like yeah. you're 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 kind of scrapping and getting mm -hmm. the scraps wherever you can get them, and then you get that one shoot that kind of puts you over the hill, and then they start coming after you. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. Great. And it, it, but and it, the thing, it's also fun. But like when I noticed, I think I found my lane. You know, said so to me. Would I love to branch out and do more outdoor photography? Of course, I'd love to. Like I'm, I have a shoot this afternoon at um, uh, Nelson's Ghost Town, so I want to start doing more outdoor photography. It's a pain in the ass. I'm not good at natural light. I need my strobes, but I'm learning as I go. Right. Um, I did a shoot uh, two weeks ago um, at the Ghost. The pictures actually came out really good because I did bring my strobes. Even outdoors, I, I use my strobes. But um, I want to start doing more outdoor stuff. But it's a pain in the ass out there. Gyms are easy. I could get to any gym in Vegas within 20 minutes. Gym, set up the lights. You're shooting outdoors. You got to drag your, your all your gear through the desert or over rocks. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> <You> <laughs> right. Know? Sounds like it. You know, and I'm charging the same amount of money. You know, so it's not like it's like all right. <laughs> right. You know, I should charge more, but right. I don't have the credentials where people don't know me as the outdoor fitness photographer yet. Right. So I might go after that, but people are like, no, stay within your lane. People know you, you're the one that shoots in the gyms. So the maybe, gym guy. Maybe, that's, maybe that's my lane. I like it, I like you know, it. So who knows? So how do people get in touch with you? Uh, mostly through Instagram. Yeah. I have a website, which is uh, raysalonphotography.com. But um, I guess like every other photographer, it's it's Instagram. It's it's Ray Salon Photography. Okay. S-A-U-L-O-N, -S -S so, Salon with a U. Okay. So, um, Anything else on the horizon that you want to uh, plug or talk about that's coming up? Uh, I have two big projects. I just got a project, which is a non-fitness project with um, a company called Las Vegas Custom Motorsports, where they do the outdoor. It's the Hawaiian culture. They have the, they have the pathfinders, where they do the they put the big wheels on these pathfinders and they go into the that's that's a big project. I have to bring in two or three. So I have three people on my team now. Actually, I actually have five. So we have high grade equipment. We have two black magic cameras. We could bring in a dragon if we needed to. But I'm gonna to try to lean more towards cinematography than just videography. You know, so there are some people that are, vi I'm a videographer, you know. Then there are people that are cinematographers where they shoot, it looks like a movie. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of headed towards that now. The problem is, I'm not sure if that's the direction that social media is headed. 
Mm. Because to me, like what I've learned, if I shoot a professional video with my real gear, I'm only going to get like three, 400 views. I shoot a reel with my cell phone, I'll hit 4,000 views in an hour. So I don't understand this algorithm <laughs> that's right. going on. Right. But it seems like I might have to pivot once again where a lot of the content I'm now doing is now a lot more video and real driven because even Instagram, Instagram is now a video platform. You know, the vice president of Instagram went on, I think it was like two years ago. And he said, yeah, we're no longer a picture. We are now a video platform, you know, which is not good for photographers, but for photographers in the fitness industry, they're always going to need their pictures. Mm -hmm. And um, what I tell people don't get discouraged because the one look that a cell phone will never pull off is the look of strobe lights. Mm. Like when you're shooting off strobes, you will never get that look off a cell phone. Mm. Like you have so much control over how the lighting's gonna hit the subject. Like I could take, I could take a subject who's 3% body fat and throw the lights a certain way and she'll look flat. Like she doesn't have a cut at all. And then I could take the same model at like 12% body fat, I could angle the lights a certain way where it's gonna show, throw more shadows, fix it in post, and now she looks like she's at 3%. Right. You can't do that really with a cell phone. Got it, got you know, it. But it's, it's like, you know, like, look at our friend over here. <laughs> he's, all over, <laughs> he's all over the reels, your stuff is so entertaining. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm trying to figure out, is it worth it for me to, to even go after cinematography? Mm. You know, but this one guy um, that we're gonna be doing you know, one of the videos that he wants to do, it's potentially a $9,000 video. It's like a nine minute movie. Um, I, told him, I said, all right, that's a drone. That's a rig camera on a truck, which I don't have. You know, we could probably jump on one of your trucks with a gimbal. We have two gimbals. We can shoot it in a black magic camera. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you want us to call in a red weapon camera, like a cinema tag, you know, a cinema, like right. a red, right. like that's going to be twice the price. Right. Because you're shooting in a different, you know, a different format. Right. You know, so there's more money in it. But is it really worth it anymore? Yeah. You know, that's what I tell my clients. Is it worth it? So you're going to spend $9,000 on a video that looks like YouTube that you're maybe going to get 200 views? Or we could just shoot reels all day long and you're going to get 20,000 views right. <laughs> for real. Right, right. You know, so it's just one of the, it's just, you know, it's just, you never know. Technology is right. changing. So yeah. Fast. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Ray, I really appreciate you making the time today. Yeah, I appreciate it. This too. was a great conversation. Um, I'm a big fan. Me too. And uh, so, um, yeah, let us, uh, we'll plan that photo shoot at 100%, Kilo. 100%. Um, um, and uh, yeah, have Just a great day. I'm, I'm excited to see what's next with you. Looking forward to it. Thank awesome. you for having me. Thank you. All right, Fit Fam. This was a great show. Um, and so until next time, like, share, uh, tell a friend. Um, I'm out. I can feel